Hello and welcome to a new lesson for English learners in grade 7. My name is Sanja Bozinovic and I'm your English teacher. Today we are talking about tech and health. By the end of today's lesson you will be able to write a short survey on the use of technology and you will be able to discuss the influence of technology on your health. For today's lesson you will need pencil or pen and your notebook to write notes and you will need a device with the internet connection. If you have all the equipment, we are ready. We'll start with discussing and thinking about what technology means to you. When somebody says technology, some people say IT, information technology. Some people think about computers some about robots. People remember there is virtual reality too. What is tech for you? If you are working on this lesson in front of your computer, you can pause this video and write your first notes into your notebook. What is technology for you? How do you use and what kind of technology do you use in your everyday life? How many hours a day? And do you think that is okay? Add to your notes. In our lives, we usually use technology to communicate with our family and friends. We use technology to learn and you are learning now in your online lesson. And after you have learned, you use technology to play. Is that how you use technology? Your first task is to copy the sentence from the screen into your notebook. I have used technology for, and you can draw a similar mind map, a kind of organizer, to add your ideas, to organize your ideas. What have you used technology for so far? Have you used technology for playing games? Have you used technology for learning new languages? If you are working in front of a computer, you can pause and complete this organizer with your own ideas. Here are some of my ideas. I have used technology for texting, for making phone calls, for participating in online lessons because teachers learn online too. I have played some video games. I have posted on social networking sites and I have coded. Have you? If these ideas help you, you can copy some of these ideas into your notebook or you can add some more of your own ideas. The question is still, how have you used technology so far? We have learned about the present perfect to talk about our experience, what we have done. And today we are focusing on how to ask and how to answer questions. The form of the question is have plus subject plus past participle. And I'm asking, have you talked to your granny? today? Have you played any video games? Have you phoned your best friend? These are the questions and I will remind you that some of these verbs, if you look closely, you will see are regular, some are irregular. What does it mean? Look at the ending. Talk, talked. But sent, sent is a completely different form. That's because send, build and write are some of irregular verbs. And I will remind you that you have to learn them by heart. If you haven't, keep on learning. Let's get back to asking and answering questions. Have you talked to your granny? Yes, I have. Have you played a video game today? No, I haven't. I hope not. Okay. When I ask you, when I, when I ask you, have you, you answer, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. And you can see a boomerang here. Why boomerang? 
Let me explain. When I throw a question at you, have you the question, like the boomerang, goes to you and goes back? What goes to you must return. Have you, I have, the same verb, the same auxiliary. So you will remember the boomerang. What you get, the same thing you must throw back, like the boomerang. Let's practice. Here is a list of questions for you. I would very much like to hear your answers, and I'm sorry I cannot. But you can practice. You can stop this video and practice asking and answering all these questions. Remember the boomerang. Have you talked? Yes, I have. Oh, no, I haven't. Have you played? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Practice asking and answering the questions and you can think of some more questions of the same forum. Ask and answer. Remember the boomerang. You can use ever and never with the present perfect questions and answers. Have you ever sent a friend request to a teacher? No, I haven't. Have you ever yesili ikada? You remember that all the questions in the present perfect ask about your experience, about something that started in the past and lasts until the present moment, and we don't know when exactly. Yesili ikada is a question, one of the questions, when one of the kinds of questions that, that we ask in the present perfect. And the funny thing is, when the answer is never, nikada, there is a very different thing to do from how we uh, make this answer in Croatian. In Croatian we say, ni sam nikada, and both the verb and the word nikada are negative. In English, the verb I have is positive. Nisam nikada in English is I have never sent a friend request to a stranger. You can practice with ever and never by asking the strangest things you can think about and I'm really sorry I cannot hear them. We also use the present perfect with yet, already and just. Yet goes to the end of the sentence and it's used always in negative sentences. I haven't copied examples yet. Have you copied my examples from the previous slides? Not yet. Nisam yosh. To say not yet, we make the sentence negative. I haven't copied. Nisam prepiso. And we put yet at the end. Of course, you can say, I have already written, Vec sam napisao, or I've just written, I've just finished, Upravo sam napisao. Already and just come between have and the verb. Yet goes to the end of the sentence and the sentence is negative. Keep this in mind. It's time to practice. First, we are practicing how to use have or has. Have you were the questions on the previous slides. But sometimes we talk about somebody else, the third person, and we must say has, he or has, she. Practice asking have or has. If you think it's too easy for you, you can just try the examples on this slide. But if you need more time, Here's the link. Go to this bit.ly link, word order free, to practice in your own time. You can repeat the exercise as many times as you need. And the correct answers are, have you played a video game? Has Mark played a video game? Have your friends ever coded? Has Mara ever built in Minecraft? 
Have you finished your poster? Have we learned how to ask questions? Have we? I hope we have. Yes, we have. Now we'll, we are thinking about how tech and health are related. Look at these pictures. Some of them show you how technology can help you and some of them make you think how technology can damage your health. Think about benefits and health problems related to technology. I need you to use your notebook again and to make some notes. Like for example, when you use technology, you can communicate with more people than in real life and you can get better at communication. You can communicate with all kinds of people and you become more self-confident. On the other hand, you spend too much time sitting in front of a screen and you feel pain in different parts of your body. You can get addicted to. Complete this list of benefits and health problems. We are reading about two different examples of people who use technology and think about how the technology has benefits and drawbacks. Listen to Mark's story and Mara's story. Mark says, and you can find his story if you go to this link on the screen. Mark says, I don't know why I spend so much time in front of different screens, but it happens almost every day. I'm really into computers and gaming. I guess I sometimes lose track of time. A good thing is that I have started using technology for most of my learning activities too. If I can send homework to my teacher online, I can find answers books to read, and films too. Unfortunately, that means even more screen time for me. My neck is stiff, I've been, I feel pain in my back and in my left shoulder. I have even skipped meals a few times. I'll have to do something about it. When I think hard about it, I believe I only have to be better organized and I will be master of technology and not vice versa. Mara says, for me, there are more benefits than drawbacks. I don't spend more than two or three hours in front of my computer and I always try to be focused and use it the best I can. I enjoy communicating with friends on a few social networking platforms. My English has improved a lot because I read and listen to a lot of English. It's fun. I've just sent an emoji to my best friend. I hope it will make her smile. She always says I'm uh, an emoji queen and I'm proud of it. I feel good about myself. I have also seen so many creative craft, craft ideas for the holidays that I'm not sure I will have time to use them all. That's one of the drawbacks. Too many good ideas and too little time. I must admit I'm a bit afraid that the computer will make me sit too much and I won't get enough exercise. To fight that, I bought one of those fitness wristbands which always remind you when it's time to move away from the screen. That's Mara's story. Add to your list of ideas about the benefits and health problems caused by technology and think about how similar and how different you are from Mara and from Mark. Your task for today is to Think about what you have learned about making questions and what you have learned about benefits and health problems caused by technology. And to think about five questions for your classmates, for your friends, and create a survey. Write five questions. You can send your friends those five questions in two different forms as a message with all five questions in one message you can create an online survey using Google, Google Forms or Microsoft Forms. When you send your friends the five questions, uh, like for example, have you ever played video games for more than three hours? You can think of five questions if you remember what the problems were 
that you listed, that the Mara and the Mark mentioned, when you send those five questions to your friends, you will wait for their answers to get back to you. When they answer your five questions, you will read their answers and you will compare what they say with what you think about the use of technology in everyday life and you will write only three sentences. You can write more if you wish, but your task is to write three sentences. In my class, how many number of students have used technology, then you will write what they have used technology for. They are more similar to Mark, to Mara, because you will explain why your friends most of your friends are like Mara or like Mark. And then you will add your opinion. What do you think about that kind of behavior? The last activity in today's lesson is the checklist. But to see what you have to check, unjumble the sentences, unjumble the words in the sentences. Here are the first two sentences. And sentence number three. And the last sentence. You can see not in this one. Don't worry. Keep on learning is my advice. If you would like to keep unjumbling, practicing the word order, you can go to the link that you can see on the screen, word order two, and you will find this exercise. And here is the unjumbled checklist for you to check. Have you learned how to make questions? Have you made your notes for writing about tech and health? Have you started writing about technology and health? And if you haven't learned all irregular verbs yet, remember my advice. Keep on learning. We are coming to the end of today's lesson. I hope you have enjoyed the lesson and you have learned about how to ask and answer questions using the present perfect. Remember to stay safe, to stay at home and to keep learning English. That's the end of today's lesson. Goodbye until our next lesson.